Will baking soda and vinegar really clean up your old oven trays? And does Coca-Cola actually remove rust? Let's find out. So you may have seen stories online of cleaning up your old burnt out pans and oven trays using baking soda and vinegar. Some of the videos I've seen have you believe that after that exciting chemical reaction and leaving it to soak, all you have to do is give it a little wipe over and it'll be as good as new. Well I'm going to test it out using this really well burnt on oven tray. Now this one isn't just a prop that's been made to look dirty, it's a well used, very real baking tray that's become dirtier and more burnt on over months and months of use. So let's see how well this cleaning hack really works. I'm sprinkling a good layer of baking soda all over the tray. Then take some white vinegar and pour it over. This creates a really cool chemical reaction which foams up and releases CO2. Now this fizzing and release of carbon dioxide may help to agitate and dislodge a blockage in a drain, depending what it's blocked with. And it can also help with odours. But let's see how well it works on this oven tray. I left it to soak and after a couple of hours I'm giving it a little scrub down. Well, it's certainly not a case of just being able to wipe off any burnt stuff. Even with this scouring sponge I'm having to give it a good scrub to start seeing any cleaning. Some of the lighter stuff is coming off a little, but it's made virtually zero difference to any of the heavier burnt on stuff. To be honest I don't think it's been any different to using hot soapy water. So sad as it is, the baking soda and vinegar method didn't work for me. But please do let me know in the comments what's your experience. Have you tried it out? Did it work? And what What's your best cleaning tip? Now I have got a really cool tip for cleaning up tarnished copper. I'll show you on this old pan. To do it I'm going to be using some white vinegar and some ordinary table salt. Start by placing the pan in the sink and give it a coating of salt like this. Then take your vinegar and pour it over the salt. But do try not to wash it all off. And if you like you can add a bit more salt on top. Leave it for just 10 or 15 seconds and you can see it's already starting to clean off the tarnish. Then I'm taking a scouring sponge, pouring on some vinegar and using it to give the pan a good scrub. And you can see it only takes seconds for the copper to start shining again. I'm adding a little more salt and giving the sides a good clean too. And with just a little light scrubbing your pan starts to look like new again. I even managed to clean off the burn mark on the bottom. Pretty cool, huh? If you thought this was a good tip, please do hit the like button. And I'll be showing you a load more of my cleaning tips right after I try out the Coca-Cola on rusty metal myth. For this test I'm going to try it out on these rusty old pliers. It is just surface rust but it has started to become quite thick. So apparently Coca-Cola contains a small amount of phosphoric acid which can also be used as a rust neutralizer. Let's see how well it works. I'm placing these pliers nose down into a glass, then filling the glass up to completely cover them. <laughs> it feels like such a strange thing to do. And you can even see some bubbles on the surface of the pliers. After six hours I lifted them out. I dried them off a little on this towel and let's take a look. So it does kind of look a little bit better than when we started, but there's still a lot of visible rust. Over time supposedly phosphoric acid will neutralise rust and turn it into a black oxide. But there's only going to be a small amount of this acid in coke, so let's see what happens if I leave them submerged for 24 hours. I'm also going to be trying it out on this rusty metal plate. You can see the rust on this really is quite bad. I can even scrape off this little layer. I'm putting it in this bowl and pouring over the coke. So with the pliers, this time when I took it out and dried it off, it definitely looks cleaner than it did to start with. If we take a look back at what it was like you can appreciate the difference. But I don't know how much of it was from just getting it wet and rubbing it off with a towel and how much the coke actually helped. And when I took this piece out, again drying it off with a towel, you can see it did remove a lot onto the fabric. But it definitely looks a lot tidier than it did to start with and it has started to become a bit black. But I do think a commercially available rust cleaner would be a lot lot better and I don't think I'll be using coke again. As a little bonus tip though I'm going to show you how to tidy up these pliers even more. I'm going to use some of these long thin balloons to make some new rubber grips. Just cut the bottom off to length and slide it up over the handle. Do the same on the other one and after you've done both it looks pretty good. And finally I'm giving the drawers a squirt with some WD-40 and rubbing it in a little. And there we go, from old rusty pliers to something that looks a lot smarter and can actually function again. Haha, <laughs> thanks Coke. Next I'm going to show you some of my other favourite cleaning tips. 
WD-40 is not only good for lubricating, but if you've got a grimy, oily, dirty patch on a surface, you can give it a quick squirt with some WD-40 and rub it off with some kitchen paper. The WD-40 helps to break down the oil, making it relatively easy to wipe off. Then just give it a wipe down with some warm soapy water after. And it's also really good for cleaning off grime from your tools. I'm squirting some onto the handles of these pliers and giving them a good wipe down. And look at that, they're as good as new! If you suffer from hard water and you've got lime scale and water stains all over your kettle, you can pour in half a glass of vinegar and pretty much watch as it dissolves the lime scale. To clean the spout I'm taking some kitchen roll, pouring on some vinegar and pushing it into the spout to soak for a while. Then I'm using it to wipe off the water stains on the outside of the kettle. Give it all a really good rinse out and a wipe down. And you can see it's almost like a new kettle again. It's made a huge difference and it really was easy. You can also use vinegar to make your own cleaning spray. I bought this 5 litre tub of white vinegar which will last me for ages and I'm going to reuse this empty spray bottle. To make the spray I measured out one glass of vinegar and poured it into the bottle. Then add the same amount of water and to give it some fragrance I'm taking a lemon, cutting off a slice and removing the peel. I cut it into a few pieces and added it to the bottle too for a nice fresh lemony fragrance. Finally I'm adding a few drops of washing up liquid. And that's our homemade cleaning spray. It's really good for cleaning down work surfaces and things like a stainless steel sink. I'm just giving it a quick spray over, letting it soak for a minute, then giving it a scrub. And it's made a really big difference. And because it's good with water stains and lime scale, vinegar is really good at cleaning bathrooms too. You can see there's lime scale building up all over the shower screen here, and the shower head and the rail are a little bit grubby too. So I'm giving it all a quick squirt with our spray, and to clean the shower head I'm removing it from the hose, placing it inside a sandwich bag, and I'm soaking it in a load of fresh vinegar. After a short while give it all a light scrub down, and check out how clean the shower head is now. Ready to screw back onto the hose, and clip onto the nice clean rail. And look how clean the shower screen is. If you enjoy having a candle, but accidentally spill some wax onto the carpet, it can be really difficult to get out. Here's a tip to help. Take a piece of kitchen paper, fold it in half, and place it over the wax. Next we're going to use an iron to heat up the wax through the paper. And as the wax melts it gets absorbed into the paper like this. I'm turning it over and using the other end to do the same again. Just keep moving the iron, have it on a low heat and make sure you don't melt the carpet. Repeat the process as many times as you need to until all the wax is gone. And your carpet should be as good as new. Pretty cool huh? And if you move some furniture and leave an imprint in your carpet, you can use a fork to revive it, and make the imprint nice and flush again. If you've decided to give your oven a good clean, check your front door to see if it has a removable glass panel which you can slide out for cleaning. I cleaned the racks in the inside of the oven with some oven cleaner and elbow grease, and when you're putting it back together, I'd recommend keeping a clean oven tray at the bottom to catch any spills. Whitening toothpaste is a mild abrasive and it can be used for various cleaning jobs. I'm using it to give this draining board a good scrub down. Then give it a good wipe over with a clean cloth and it's removed all the water stains and given it a little polish. I'm also using it for the sink and the other draining board and it's made such a difference. Check that out. You can also use it for jobs like cleaning up your old trainers. I'm putting some onto a toothbrush and giving this shoe a good scrub. Really get into the nooks and crannies and work your way all around. Then give it a good wipe over and look how it compares. It's cleaned up really well. I'm also using toothpaste on this old toothbrush to clean up some discoloured tile grouting. It does take a little bit of scrubbing, but it made a huge difference. If you enjoyed this video, you might like to see these really cool life hacks by clicking on the link here, or check out these food and cooking ideas. Have fun, stay safe, and as always, thanks for watching!